At this point, everyone has heard about the IMF, which stands for the International Monetary Fund, a global organization that was established in 1944 with the primary purpose of promoting international monetary cooperation and facilitating international trade. The IMF has come to be known as a lender of last resort for member countries that are experiencing economic difficulties and provides them with loans to help stabilize their economies. However, these loans often come with conditions that require countries to implement economic policies that are in line with the IMF's economic philosophy and can push countries into austerity measures that are known to be extremely restrictive. These austerity measures imposed by the IMF often require governments to cut back on aspects such as government spending, reducing subsidies, and raising taxes. These measures are often aimed at reducing budget deficits and stabilizing the economy, but they can also have negative effects, such as increasing unemployment and reducing social spending. Additionally, the conditions attached to IMF loans can result in a loss of economic sovereignty for borrowing countries, as they may be required to adopt policies that are outside of their own best interests. While the IMF can be a savior for countries struggling to manage their finances, they have also been criticized for exacerbating economic problems in borrowing countries by imposing harsh conditions that are difficult to meet. This has led to accusations that the IMF is more concerned with advancing its economic philosophy than with promoting economic welfare of its member countries. As a result, the role of the IMF in the global economy remains a subject of debate and controversy. But rather than get into that debate today here at Jairi Caribbean, we will pivot and instead take a look at which Caribbean countries are most indebted to the IMF and how they are managing to navigate these waters. Information today on the level of debt owed to the IMF is taken directly from the IMF and a link to all the countries and the amount of debt owed can be seen in the link in the description below. So, without further ado, let us highlight the top 10 Caribbean countries that are most indebted to the IMF. Please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for our future videos. Just as a disclaimer, tractions with the IMF are done through special drawing rights. These special drawing rights, or SDRs as they are known, are an international reserve asset created by the IMF. SDRs itself is not a currency, but rather a basket of currencies, which includes the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, the British pound sterling, and the Chinese yuan with a value determined by their exchange rates. As a result, reports from the IMF on debts owed are reported in SDRs and not USD. But for ease of understanding, we have put the figures in this list in USD using the current SDR exchange rate published as of February 2023. Let's get started. Number 10 on our list is Dominica, which has a debt-to-GDP ratio of 108% placing it among the 30 countries in the world with a debt-to-GDP ratio of over 100%. The debt-to-GDP ratio is a measure of a country's debt relative to its economic output and is calculated by dividing a country's total public debt by its gross domestic product, GDP. The benefit of using a debt-to-GDP ratio is that it indicates a country's ability to pay back its debts, a higher ratio indicates that a country has a larger amount of debt relative to its economic output, which can make it more difficult to repay. Dominica's IMF debt is $19,963,130 US dollars. Dominica's relationship with the fund has been more comprehensive and historical than its neighbor, St. Lucia. The country has taken loans periodically from the fund since it joined in 1984 and relied heavily on the fund during the mid-2000s and into the financial crisis of 2008. The majority of Dominica's current debt to the IMF, however, is from loans taken out during the COVID-19 pandemic. The country had been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, with an estimated decline in GDP of 11% in 2020, underpinned by a sharp reduction in tourism receipts that affected connected sectors and by lockdown measures to limit the spread of the virus. The output decline was contained by health spending, social transfers, and public investment resilient to natural disasters, which increased significantly, leading to an increase in public debt to 106% of GDP 
despite record high citizenship by investment CBI revenue. The country is slowly rebounding and aims to start making repayments to its loans this year in 2023 to bring down the country's high debt ratio. Sticking to smaller Caribbean countries, we now come to the country of many islands at number 9, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with a debt-to-GDP ratio of 88% and an overall debt of USD $29,287,283.55. Compared to other countries on our list, St. Vincent and the Grenadines have been in relatively good standing with the IMF since the country first took out a loan back in 1984. Over the years since, the country had only drawn on the IMF a few times with relatively small loans. So, why is the country on our list? Well, as one will soon come to find about our list, many countries turned to the IMF during the COVID-19 pandemic in an attempt to bolster their country's budgets and ride a wave out of the pandemic. Back in 2020, the country took out a series of loans. These loans were part of the IMF's Rapid Financing Instrument, RFI, which is designed to provide emergency financial assistance to member countries facing urgent balance of payments needs, such as those resulting from natural disasters, public health crises, or other external shocks. The RFI program for St. Vincent and the Grenadines aimed to support the country's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which had significant impacts on the country's economy and public health system. The program included measures such as financial support for affected sectors, strengthening of the health system, and social protection for vulnerable populations. While the country was in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was hit again with a natural disaster with the eruption of the country's La Soufrière volcano, adding another economic pressure into the mix. Despite the authorities' strong efforts to contain deficits, critical fiscal responses to these shocks pushed up public debt. On the bright side, however, the country's public debt is still viewed as sustainable, and the country is projected to grow by 5% in 2023, which is expected to put the economy on track to pay back its debt and return to economic stability. Next on our list is another smaller country with a significantly smaller debt owed to the fund. At number 8 is the country of St. Lucia at USD $30,580,600. The country's GDP makes its debt-to-GDP ratio at 96%, meaning again the country's total debt, including that from sources other than the IMF, is almost equal to a full year of the country's domestic economic production. St. Lucia has had a relationship with the IMF since the 1980s, and its debt has not been as big of an issue for the country's economic development when compared to some other Caribbean countries on our list. The country had seen slow but solid improvements to its finances and economic stability into the late 2000s and 2010s and was debt-free from the IMF. But like many other Caribbean countries, St. Lucia suffered from the wrath of the COVID-19 pandemic. St. Lucia took out the amount it currently owes, 30 million US dollars, to stay afloat during the pandemic. But as tourist arrivals rebound significantly, the full recovery of the island remains incomplete. The country's public balance sheet remains under considerable strain, with a sizable fiscal deficit and a significant increase in public debt since 2019. Inflation has picked up with the surge in commodity prices, and though the financial sector has remained stable, non-performing loans have risen and are still above pre-pandemic levels. But as the country recovers from economic hardships in the past, the long-term prospects of St. Lucia are still hopeful. At number 7, we now come to a country that is ranked high on our list due to its higher debt-to-GDP ratio of 70%. The small country of Grenada only owes USD $35,456,348, and this figure can be a difficult one for the country to handle. Grenada first sought assistance from the IMF back in 1984, when the country was facing a severe economic crisis. The IMF provided loans in exchange for structural reforms designed to stabilize the economy and promote growth. Grenada's debt to the IMF progressively grew over the years due to incremental borrowing from the fund. Since then, Grenada has continued to work closely with the IMF to address its debt and promote economic stability. In 2020, 
with the severe impact that the COVID-19 pandemic had on the Grenada economy, especially as it relates to tourism, the IMF approved an emergency loan of USD $22.4 million to help Grenada. Many loans such as this were made in the heat of the financial crisis, and it is only recently that countries such as Grenada are starting to reckon with the consequences. Pivoting down to the south of the Caribbean, we come to our next country which recently had a political storming of its parliament in opposition to austerity requirements set by the IMF. At number 6, Suriname saw protesters enter its parliament demanding the country's administration reverse policies that have led to the removal of subsidies on several items including fuel. These policies were actually in compliance with the IMF loans taken out by the country, which led to the country owing USD $112,605,200 and a debt-to-GDP ratio of 125%. But it is only until fairly recently that Suriname had transactions with the IMF. It was in 2016 when the country first approached the fund and entered into a loan agreement with the IMF, which was part of the IMF's Extended Fund Facility, EFF, which is designed to support economic reform programs in member countries. The program was aimed to address the country's macroeconomic imbalances and to support structural reforms that promote sustainable economic growth. The program included measures such as fiscal consolidation, debt management, and improving the business environment to encourage investment and entrepreneurship. However, the program faced significant hurdles in implementation. Suriname struggled with weak economic growth, high inflation, and a decline in the value of its currency, which posed significant challenges to the program's goals. In addition to this, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the country to take out additional funds to cover the crisis, and the currency commodity inflation has hit the country hard at a time when terms for the IMF loans are due. Whatever the road ahead is, it will be a long and a hard one for Suriname, but is the one that the country will almost surely overcome. Our next country at number 5 is what some would consider an ideal stable Caribbean economy, which is well diversified and has a high standard of living. But its inclusion on this list indicates that even those countries we perceive as having it well put together still have struggles of their own to deal with. With a debt-to-GDP ratio of 90%, the Bahamas owes some USD $260,649,600 to the IMF and most of this came during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Bahamas' tourism-dependent economy was hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, which came on the heels of the devastation caused by Hurricane Dorian. While the economy was recovering from the impact of Hurricane Dorian, the revenues the country relied on from tourism disappeared during the pandemic, and the country was no longer able to rebuild at the speed it needed. The IMF stepped in to loan Bahamas the necessary funds it needed to stay afloat while implementing policy priorities ahead aimed at safeguarding the recovery, preserving debt sustainability, and promoting sustained and inclusive growth. The road to recovery for the Bahamas is a long one. But as the world returns to normal, the government is expected to see a budget surplus in the coming years and swiftly decrease its dues to the IMF. With the lowest debt-to-GDP ratio at number 4, Haiti has a relatively high amount of debt owed to the IMF, totaling USD $276,771,292.20, and the country's debt-to-GDP ratio is only 24%. Haiti has had a long and complex relationship with the IMF, and like many developing countries, Haiti has struggled with debt and economic instability, and has turned to the IMF for help on several occasions. One of the most significant examples of this occurred in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake that struck Haiti in 2010. In response to the disaster, the international community pledged billions of dollars in aid to help the country recover. However, much of this aid was channeled through the IMF, which used it to provide loans to Haiti instead of simply giving it to the government. In recent years, the country has since seen some cancellations of its debt owed, but still has a fairly large amount of overall debt to the IMF. By the way, if you are getting value from this presentation, we would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a like, 
subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for our next video. Thank you. Next on our list at number 3 is one of the most overborrowed countries of them all, Barbados. Barbados has one of the highest debt-to-GDP ratios in the world, currently standing at 141%, placing it at number 9 in the world. This is equivalent to USD $480,394,075 and is the third largest debt owed in the Caribbean to the IMF, which is a feat considering the country's small size. Barbados had gone to the IMF before the COVID-19 pandemic in 2018 as a way to address shortfalls in the country's budget. It was during this period that the establishment of the Barbados Economic Recovery and Transformation BERT, plan was made. But when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the country was forced to take out even more loans to cover the loss the country saw from tourism. It was in 2020 when the country took out its largest loan amount ever from the fund, USD $237 million to fund the country's recovery. The future of the Barbados economy is looking much better than its past. However, Barbados is expected to see economic growth of 10% in 2023 and with the country's tourism economy booming as big as ever, repaying its loan to the IMF is expected to be much easier than the country previously experienced. That does not mean the road will be easy, however. Cuts to the country's spending are still expected and given the country's high socialist policies, can see those most vulnerable feeling the pressure. The runner-up at number two in terms of debt-to-GDP ratio is the Spanish giant of the Dominican Republic at USD $682,204,600. That puts their debt-to-GDP ratio at 50%, which is already high. The Dominican Republic, like many other developing countries, has had a long-standing relationship with the IMF. The Dominican Republic's debt to the IMF has been a significant issue for the country's economy and has been a recurring one since the country first sought assistance from the organization in the 1980s. At that time, the Dominican Republic was facing a severe economic crisis characterized by high inflation, a large trade deficit, and a large foreign debt. The IMF provided the country with loans in exchange for structural reforms designed to stabilize the economy and promote growth. Over the years, the Dominican Republic has continued to borrow from the IMF and its debt to the organization has grown significantly. However, to meet the conditions of its loans from the IMF, the country has had to implement a series of structural reforms aimed at promoting macroeconomic stability, reducing public debt, and improving the business environment. These reforms have included measures such as fiscal consolidation, monetary tightening, and pension reform. Whether these reforms have truly saved the Dominican Republic or enslaved it is a question of much debate. Some state that these loan restrictions can have negative social and economic impacts on the poorest and most vulnerable members of society, while others argue that the IMF's approach to debt relief by tightening fiscal spending is the policy needed to put countries' economies on long-term growth. At the opposition of number one country most indebted to the IMF, we come to another economic giant in the Caribbean, Jamaica. As of February 2023, Jamaica owes USD $797,954,847.52 to the fund, which puts its debt-to-GDP ratio at 94%. Jamaica's history with the IMF has been a long and tumultuous one, going all the way back to when the country joined the International Monetary Fund in 1963 and received its first loan. Since its membership with the IMF, Jamaica has used the IMF resources consistently and taken advantage of the availability of loans provided to help improve the standard of living and economic stability of the country. It is primarily during the 1970s when Jamaica entered into two standby agreements that its economy saw more difficult problems. Standby agreements with the IMF require countries to alter their fiscal policies to receive loans and assistance. The difficulty in repaying these loans led them to enter into further agreements which permitted Jamaica to repay its outstanding loan over a longer period due to economic factors that prevented the country from following the originally planned repayment plan. In conclusion, 
The International Monetary Fund has played a significant role in promoting economic stability in many developing countries through its lending programs and policy advice. While the IMF's loans may come with conditions and challenges, they can also provide much-needed support and technical expertise to help countries address their economic challenges and promote sustainable growth and development. There are, however, debates on the effectiveness of the IMF's lending programs, particularly the conditions which go along with accepting the institution's funds and the austerity measures required to stay in good standings with the IMF. These austerity measures have been argued to stifle economic growth and place a financial strain on those most vulnerable in target countries at the expense of lofty macroeconomic stability. It therefore goes to show that the IMF is only one part of a broader set of policies and initiatives necessary for promoting sustainable growth and development, and that a country's long-term economic success will depend on its ability to implement structural reforms, invest in human capital and infrastructure, and develop a diversified and competitive economy, rather than just taking out continuous loans to get by. The IMF's impact on economic development is a subject of ongoing debate, but its role in promoting macroeconomic stability and supporting structural reforms cannot be denied. The key to success for countries working with the IMF will be finding a balance between short-term relief and long-term growth and development, while also addressing the structural challenges that underlie their debt and economic challenges. Let us know what you think of institutions such as the IMF and World Bank. Are they key resources countries can draw on in times of financial need? Or do the requirements placed on countries to align with the IMF principles make it not workable to take these loans? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Again, we would like to thank you for watching and remind you to please like, subscribe, share our channel with others, and turn on the notification bell for our next video as we tackle the Caribbean's most difficult issues together. This is Jiri Caribbean.